in case of anything you can wave your hand or leave us a chat message here uh, thank you for joining once again very good morning hope all of you are uh, from different parts of india we also have people joining from uh, uh, outside of india almost uh, 14 other uh, uh, you know countries say so and registrants from about 50 odd organizations we are expecting about 800 people to join in the webinar thank you all of you who have joined in early I request your patience for a couple of minutes so just for the uh, just for the introduction sake uh, this is a three in one cloud computing webinar where we are going to speak about three of the popular cloud computing platforms beginning with uh, amazon web services or aws first aws plus devops that is which is followed by google cloud and then azure plus devops so our first sme in fact is already waiting we'll just give him some time before he begins uh, uh, he sharat sharat uh, would probably start sharing in about 5 to 10 minutes uh, so that we have a good audience in the meanwhile we just wanted to know a little more about uh, all of you folks who have joined in us uh, you know today and uh, get a, give us more input so that we can understand our audience more and make it a better presentation just to understand more about you a little bit of uh, you know detailing uh, we have put in a smart a small poll to start off with the poll will be about 5 uh, to 6 minutes for all of you to respond so i'll just launch the polling now and cut it in the next 5 minutes so that we could have good responses post which sharat would uh, begin you know start talking on the world of amazon web services cloud computing followed by the other two smes who will join us later so i'll place myself on mute and uh, launching the poll here for all of your responses thank you thank you folks we have got uh, i think all of you are able to see the poll uh we have got most of the responses about 70% people have already responded so uh, so we will close the poll in a minute or so now i would request i think most of the participants uh, either who have joined from phone or something have got numbers in their participant name request you to go to the more option and rename with your uh, names so that we would know who it is and which organization uh um, so having said that let me just hand over the so hand over the presentation to my colleague here uh, sharat sharat are you there are you hey hi basker very good morning i'm here hey morning Can sharat so i think we have got uh, uh, quite a lot of interested people who logged in uh, so uh, almost 800 were expected but we have got about i think 1170 interested learners and listeners uh, so for paucity of time i think you can start off sharat and let the other people uh, come in so i am just ending the polling we have got uh, the poll is almost on for 3 and 1/2 minutes i'll just leave it on for another 1 and 1/2 minute to make it 5 minutes uh, and then maybe you can take over with your presentation thank you baskar so i would once again request all of the uh, listeners and uh, participants to please uh, log in with their names and not with the phone models we have got uh, uh, zomi we have got some vivos we have got some oppos and some numbers So we first to change it to your name so that we could understand. Thanks a lot. We have, I've just closed the polling uh, for the sake of everybody. Yes. Uh, let me just show the results of the poll. Hope you are all able to see what is on my screen. Even even if it's not there, I will just read it out. So out of the one uh, thirty people who have voted on the poll, we have got about yes, almost all of them except for one person. Almost all of them are working. about 12% are working on cloud technologies 47% no cloud only some idea about 41% say i don't know about cloud at all 
so would you like to do a training yes 71 percent say after this we would like to you know do a training uh, what are you expecting from this webinar uh, 86 percent have said we would want to know about cloud and different platforms about certification 42 percent career opportunities in cloud 47 percent practical know-how of cloud uh, is 47 percent so Sharath, I think that's an input for you. Maybe you can start off with your specialty into AWS and DevOps. I'm just uh, close, closing the, uh, the poll here and uh, muting myself so that you can take over. Yeah, thank you, Baskar. Thanks for that uh, good round of poll. We could get uh, insights about what people are expecting from this session. <laughs> So, hello everyone, a very good morning to one and all. Uh, it might be good evening to some of the other people there. So, just want to check uh, Baskar and uh, people, can you just drop me a message in the chat window? Is my voice audible? Is the screen uh, visible to everyone there? Can I get a quick confirmation from the chat window? Yeah. Okay. I hope everyone are safe and uh, you know everyone are yeah i hope everyone are safe <laughs> okay thank you so guys let's utilize this time uh, since we have uh, the situations and in and around us are very much there that we have to you know protect ourselves and uh, you know keep ourselves safe at the same time we have plenty of time so that we could utilize this time for learning something better so on this principle uh, you know i am planning to give a little more insights about my exposure of working with uh, different kinds of cloud and uh, what was uh, what what exactly i have learned working on these cloud uh, technologies and how did it help myself to grow in this uh, you know cloud platforms so people, first question to all of you is that, why is that you guys are looking forward to learn this course? I could get most of the answers from the poll itself. But when I do see the responses, you know, when I see the responses, the responses are in front of you guys. I get most of the responses, something like, they fall into the category that AWS or cloud is kind of a latest technology. DevOps is something which is very much new for us to get started. You know, they have uh, interest to learn about the tools. They have focus on implementing uh, projects involving cloud. Some companies uh, have already adapted to the cloud. So they have a mandate now that their uh, organizations are requesting them to move on to cloud. Some companies are asking them who are already working on cloud regarding the certifications. So a lot of responses from a lot of people when I meet them. So the aim for this today's session is very, very simple guys, that before you leave this session, I want the answer to be evaluated that why is that you are learning this course and how this course gonna help you? Are you able to get the answer? If you are able to get the answer, the agenda of this uh, you know, session or the training will be fulfilled. So, People, in order to get started, let me start to bring down the discussion to the technical aspects. It, it was about 10 years ago when, when I got introduced to a new world called data. I am aware, I hope you guys are all aware what about the word called data, but someone said to me that the next technology or the next world is gonna move in and around the idea of data, that is, the new currency that's gonna be built in and around. So what is this data? To put it in simple terms, guys, if you see the top 10 richest companies in the world, you see every other company is able to colonize that idea of having or you know protecting the data or the more amount of data that you hold, the richer you are. A very simple example is your Facebook. Facebook doesn't have its own data. It is dependent on your data. It's like we post those images, we put our uh, you know, scripts, we put our uh, you know, uh, messages, whatever that we have, it's our own data. And the amount of 
data they have is huge and the the uh, the capacity to hold such data is something that they have in the form of the data centers that means more amount of data the richer the 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 companies are going richer and richer so in that context you know the technologies uh, have adapted for the data center management now just to give you a heads up for a data center to be up and running i need all of these resources right from space storage surveillance monitoring servers people hardware a lot of things which are the direct factors that influence a data center operation now just imagine if this context is you know discussed in terms of a non it company let's look at the perception of a non it company the best example that i can give you is guys fedex fedex is a company that uh, that's one of my projects that i work one of my client that i work so fedex was primarily into the business of shipping they ship the products from point a to point b now if they are shipping the products from point a to point b are they going to invest their complete investments on the data center the answer is very much no so they have certain part of their investments that they will be allocating towards these data centers at the same time they have some challenges to manage this data center so what guys if you are given a data center uh, to manage or you know you are not an expert in data center management so what is the next step that you will go the next thing is you will go and look for a alternative that is how can you leverage that is you will look for an expertise or look for an expert team to handle these operations and uh, you will start to outsource this to someone else in, in the form of a service provider now when the organizations when the industry looked for the alternative they found the solution was all about cloud and that's where the entry of cloud has taken into the market if i look the space of cloud market there are different vendors i felt the vendors like aws cloud from amazon that is offered from amazon azure from microsoft google cloud platform from google these are the three market leaders that right now are ruling the industry of cloud so guys can i get a quick confirmation from all of you people in the chat window that you have understood what is the transition of cloud and what are the three ma major vendors in the cloud market thank you so guys if these three cloud market uh, if these are the three major vendors that are right now in the cloud market so there should be some pros and cons or some kind of advantages or some people feel that aws is better azure is better google is better so at this point of at this point of time guys i don't want to invest my time in terms of the discussion which is better let's get started with one cloud provider my choice would be aws cloud currently to get started with so these cloud vendors have an amazing purpose to be they are built with an amazing purpose the purpose is use whatever how much that you want to use and pay me accordingly that's like your utility bill the best way to understand this guys when you don't have your own vehicle to travel from point a to point b or when you don't want to travel with your own vehicle you go with a service provider service providers are right now your cab aggregators uber ola so you book that vehicle for a period of 1 hour you will pay the rental cost for that 1 hour so you are paying that cost for using that vehicle for about an hour in similar way when you come on to the cloud you are paying the usage cost for the number of hours that you consume so people are you worried about 
whether the fuel is available in the vehicle are you worried about whether this vehicle is in a condition because these are whose responsibilities uber responsibility or is it your responsibility can can i get a response from your guys can you drop me in the chat window is that your responsibility or the service provider uber's responsibility vendor's responsibility correct so vendor is responsible for providing the vendor's responsibility is to make sure that all these are very much up to the mark so here the point is as a business when a organization focuses on their business centric operation for example fedex fedex focuses on their business of shipping from product products from point a to point b now in such case of shifting the point products from point a to point b the service provider is responsible for making his infrastructure up and running and that is where guys you see a lot of opportunities for you as for the businesses are able to get because you are just going there and provisioning what you want you are paying for what you use you are scaling up the things as per your need you are scaling down as per the need there is nothing called upfront cost so because of these luring benefits that a business can get from adapting to cloud more and more companies have started to move on to cloud and every company has it has now a mandate to move their certain parts of their workloads on to cloud the very good example guys that i can see is nowadays is the startups startups don't have that lot of investments to have their infrastructure so what they do they go and buy a space in cloud and they'll get started i have seen guys in my uh, sessions where i can uh, where i go for aws cloud trainings they have their data centers ready in 5 minutes they used to be days that data center used to take some approximately about 3 to 6 months now they build on cloud within 5 minutes see the power of cloud a data center physical data center takes up to 6 months for them to build right from scratch now you can build in cloud less than 5 minutes that's an amazing way to understand the cloud because that's how the growth that's how the speed at which the industry is changing because information or data travels at the speed of light and people are also expected to deliver services at that faster rate not at the speed of light but at a faster rate to meet the needs so guys having learned now the benefits of a business that can a business can get from the cloud now it's time for us to ask a question that as i'm an I, i'm an individual so what is that i should be learning to be ready for the market so guys there's opportunity coming up there's are opportunities flowing in to the cloud industry so now you might be a developer you might be an administrator you might be a a kind of database engineer or you might be a project architect or you might be in a particular domain which has something or the other relations to the it projects now the question is how can i be ready for this revolution so guys the aim is not to make you to move away from your domain but whatever the domain right now you are in to make yourself parallel to the market need so that is what this course is all about so that is where you need to understand what exactly aws platform has positions for right from a architect role you can get started to a developer role or to an admin role people with a, a caution that these are not only the job roles that are expected to be delivered in aws cloud or any other cloud the idea is if you look at a broad view the way that you perform the job roles or your duties these have been broadly classified to an architect to a developer to an admin now let me put some more insights about each job role now who is an architect let's assume that guys let me just give you a summary of this there is a client 
like FedEx in this case. And on the other side, you see, for example, AWS cloud or AWS team. So AWS doesn't like to directly work with FedEx. They don't like to work like that. They need a partner system to be coming into action or the partner community comes into picture. For example, let's take an idea or let me highlight about CTS. CTS right now is the partner. So let's say there is a solution architect. He's an employee of CTS. So what he will do, he will start to interact with the client FedEx. FedEx gives their business requirements that they are planning to move on to cloud. They have some requirements. They have planning to adapt to AWS cloud. They want to implement the storage network, all that stuff onto AWS. So what as a solution architect you will be doing is you will understand the business requirements. Then you start to gather those requirements. The next thing what you have to do is once after the requirement, you need to find the relevant services as per their business requirements. What is the storage they need? What is the compute they need? You will start designing it. Basically, you are designing an architecture based upon the requirement. Then you design a draft version of the architect architecture. The first thing that normally we as a company, what we do is we start to send it across to AWS. So AWS starts to assign a person from AWS saying that we are allocating you, Mr. XYZ, who will validate your project, saying that for FedEx as a client, CTS is a project and uh, Mr. Sharath is a solution architect designed for this project and he is designing the solution. Now this kind of validation can be done only by AWS and AWS makes sure that the uh, architecture is validated and then it sends across to FedEx. FedEx will take good amount of time, validate the project, validate the architecture and then sends it across back to the CTS for implementation. So guys, as a nutshell, as a summary, the idea is you are trying to identify the business requirement, designing the solutions, and then delivering it to your team for deployment part. Can I get a quick confirmation from everyone out there that you have understood the simple idea of what is a solution architect? Yeah. In the chat window. Right. Now, the first part is designing the solution. The next part is deployment or delivering this. So guys, as a solution architect, your, uh, your, your task is majorly you know, built across the concept of infrastructure, infrastructure as service. All these cloud providers are very good at providing the infrastructure as service. So now the next task is, I just discussed about it. So guys, another question that I normally come across is people asking me that, you know, Sharad, I come from a different domain, like a storage domain. I come from a database domain. So the point is guys, whether it's a storage, whether it's a network, whether it's a database, your solution has to cover every part of it. That means you are, you are expected to have a little cross knowledge, cross insights about the various domains, like storage, networking, databases. So as a solution architect, if you want to get started, the market is very much open for people like you. And they don't expect that, you know, you might be doing everything ready-made here. They expect you how fast you can understand the requirement and how fast you can design it a solution. Hi, sir. Hi. Yeah, um, I'm an automation testing engineer. Uh, it is useful to learn automation also, uh, automation testers also, or only for uh, uh, data storage and uh, database team like that only. Anyone can uh, learn this AWS architect everything. Right. So we have all those points to be discussed in upcoming slides. I'll show you what is this discussion is all about. So this is one part of the domain, one part of the domain which is about architecture. Next, you'll see about, okay. you'll hear about the concept of deployment, people who do a deployment. Okay. Now, let's start to okay. spend some time with regards to the deployment part. So let's assume that the client is expected to deploy a project, which is basically designed for running a Java-based application. Let's say FedEx has said, 
uh, Sharath, we are now going ahead with your project. Uh, we are okay with the architecture. Now go ahead. And uh, Java team is ready to design a project. And the uh, project is something that they want to do a watermarking for every uh, uh, image they upload. They want to do a watermarking for it. So as part of this watermarking for the images that they upload, now I'll give you an uh, insight about an architecture. So what I do now, I bring up the compute service where it's a virtual server in AWS cloud and then the application is running on it. It does cropping and watermarking of the images. And the other side, it is about storage service. There are about buckets. Now, for those people who don't understand the idea about bucket, bucket is like storage, a folder, a folder and another folder. So what I do, users are allowing or allowed to upload their images. So what is the nature of this application is it pulls up this image and crops that image, watermarks that image and puts back into another bucket, which is new bucket after cropping and before cropping. Now, why did I mention about this guys? Now, if you look a little more into the insights about the services that are offered in terms of AWS, I picked up two services. One is compute so that this application can run on compute. And the other one is something like storage. Okay. Cropping is, let's say I have a larger version of a file. I want to bring down into a small compressed version of the size. That is what is called cropping. So I've done the cropping of image. I put a watermark on it with a logo of FedEx onto it. And then I am running this application. So here my server is based out of not in my location. It's in AWS cloud. Now the question is what Java developer has to do with this learning people. If you come from the background of development, you would have noticed, or you should have noticed by this time, your servers are not hosted in your premises. Your servers are not hosted in your client premises. Servers are hosted somewhere else in AWS cloud data centers, AWS data centers. So the question is how far you can go and understand as a developer, how the compute service will work, how a storage service will work. Why? Because your code that you've written, which is the Java app, how fast your code can interact with your compute service or how is that you will go and interact with your storage service. That's like your code is now interacting with your service offering compute as a service from AWS cloud storage as AWS storage as a service from AWS cloud. So people what companies expect is for the last years that you have been working when there was no cloud, which you have written the code for Java, the microservice architecture, how can you write the code or how your code will work with compute as a service, storage as a service or any other service when you consider. So the idea is guys, your expertise as a developer is expected to be in line with compute and storage service. Now, if I have to give you a list of the support that you will get from other technologies is that you will see you are a Java developer. You may be a Java developer. You might be a .NET developer or you might be a Python developer. All of your application expertise. May I request the participants to just go on mute if you don't mind. Okay, thank you. So the idea is whether you, if you're coming from any of these backgrounds, or if you are a developer, or if you have been, uh, uh, you know, a testing engineer. So here, companies expect you that whatever that you have been doing in terms of development, testing, are you now comfortable to deliver these things on cloud platform? Maybe you are, a, as you mentioned, you are a test engineer. So your application was running on premises. Now the application is running in cloud. Can you perform testing on cloud? Can you perform testing related to the infrastructure? Can you deliver a Java application deployed on AWS cloud? Can you deliver a .NET product 
on AWS cloud, this is what is market requirement, guys. This is what is now happening in the market. People are expected that whatever that you get the domain expertise from your previous experience, they don't want that to be placed aside. They want your experience to be utilized to the next level. Now, back onto the discussion. Solution is designed, development is happening. Now, somewhere another person comes in who is basically an admin, whose responsibility is to do a deployment, maintain, and monitor. So this guy is now, let me just list this one and let me explain you with the help of this image. So there is an admin who is responsible for doing the solution design deployment and also work in line with the developer. So the developer is continuously delivering the code and then deployment guy is continuously doing a deployment of the generated code live into AWS cloud. So he is also responsible for making sure whether his infrastructure is up and right. So AWS says, for sure, I am responsible for my compute storage services. This is something that I am offering to you. You put whatever that you want. You put a gaming application, I don't care about it. You put a ERP, CRM, whatever that you want to do, it is your choice. But making sure the design and development is under your vertical. That means AWS says, I'm giving you compute service. How to use it, how to deploy it is your choice. So here, an architect is designing the solution and doing a hands-on deployment into it. Whereas the developer is continuously developing the code to meet the needs of the solution as per the cloud architecture. And the guy who is doing a deployment is doing deployment into this cloud provider as per the instructions. Now let's assume guys, on the, as, as the market starts to grow, there are multiple ways for us to do a deployment but there should be a better way for us to do a deployment. And that better way is something which will lead for the DevOps to come into picture. So what is that? There are hundred ways to travel from point A to point B. The best way is something which is always recommended by the process. So process always recommends you to follow the best way. And that is where DevOps to come into picture guys. DevOps is kind of a process which will be adapted by the company to follow the better way. Now to get a little more insight about it, I want you guys to pay a little more attention regarding these three building blocks, designing, development, and deployment. My aim is to very specifically on the development and deployment part. So what exactly the development and deployment are and how they are related? Let's me show you if you guys are able to relate that in terms of a development environment, Majorly organizations have three kinds of environments, dev, QA, and production. So they expect the development happening to be happening smoothly gets released, like it gets built and then hand it over to the QA team for the verification, for the test, and then it gets released into deployment. It moves into deployment. So this is an ideal scenario. But a lot of challenges start to take place for the movement of code from the dev build and test cases because i'm sure 90 percent of the project life cycle is spent in both these environments as the number of people developer starts to increase the code management becomes a complex scenario because the code that is written by one developer cannot be accessible to other developer until unless it is at a central location and Developers might be on 10th version and the testing team might be on fifth or sixth version. They come up with new issues, platform issues, environment issues, a lot of issues. Another aspect is your operations team who are continuously delivering you the required infrastructure, like your servers, VM means servers to run your application. Here, they're doing the same task again and again, again and again. I'm sure guys, if the team is doing the same task again and again with no kind of automation, you know, they'll get bored. Now, if these two teams are brought together, like dev team and operations team are brought together, a scenario, an ideal scenario is expected something like this, an application gets developed in 
dev environment completely gets deployed gets a uh, higher success of results then moves into qa then moves into production now this could have been easily managed if these are interconnected if these can be brought in interconnected and automation can be brought in and that is where the concept of pipelines comes in guys so to give you a little more about a kind of pipeline i would recommend you guys to have a look at a generalized pipeline but this is not a universal pipeline so what i do as part of a pipeline i say all of my developers please make sure that you commit a code into a central location from there i'll pick the code and i'll build it and i'll run the test cases and i'll make sure that it gets deployed into a staging environment if my client says go ahead then i'll release into production and then the next release so i bring up a continuous pipeline which we call it as ci cd continuous integration and continuous deployment for the devops now this can be rightly achieved and this will pay the path for devops pipeline so guys how is devops connected to the cloud to understand that let me once again highlight the business benefits here it is something which takes away the manual way of doing a deployment by bringing automation bringing out the cost making sure those resources are launched making sure that the deployment gets faster because the code is starting to move from one environment to other environment it's all that it keeps on changing the environment so it becomes easier for us to do a management of the environments it helps you to communicate because you will see the code movement if code gets failed at one location so your team can be uh, address that you know the code movement did not play, did not go through so it will roll back to the previous version and it helps you to bring a process to manage multiple tools so the question is if these are the benefits then how to form a pipeline to answer that question guys let me give a list of categorized tools into the devops pipeline we need a support to hold and manage our source code build our source code deploy our source code integration is required provisioning is required configuration management deployment tools monitoring tools containerization and that is where the cloud will come in cloud with devops is an awesome combination right now as per the market need because you have a vehicle and also you know the route to drive so if i have to give you an analogy guys your vehicle is cloud in this case and direction is something your process so if you have the vehicle and the direction to drive then your journey will be smooth so starting ahead if i have to give you the list of the tools that we start if i have to i'm, I'm going to list those tools guys like tools right from the version control tools include like git and github aws does also offers tools like code commit that means it's an aws service that has offered build tools integration tools like jenkins code pipeline provisioning tools terraform terraform is now the market requirement the tools that i'm giving you guys are cloud agnostic this tool work with aws work with azure work with google cloud jenkins third party tools wherever i've shown you aws aws means they are specific to aws they work with aws maven third party tools git github next you see about configuration management tools like chef and ansible jenkins deployment tools nagios and a way the market has changed guys because of these tools coming into picture which is the containerization market is really really looking forward to adapt to containerization we involve dockers kubernetes and any cloud combination so okay as per the as per the need we are getting started right now as part of the cloud i'm just starting to use an aws cloud so guys what i'll do is i'll give a snapshot of all these tools at one go how does a pipeline looks like this is a pipeline this is how a pipeline looks like now my suggestion is guys we'll do one thing i'll start to do a live demonstration to show a code that is already built for you how to do a deployment for it because until unless we it will be good enough until unless we go and make our hands dirty so as part of it so what i'm going to do is guys i'm going to switch into my console 
AWS console, management console. Okay, give me a minute. So let me start to share the screen. Give me a minute. Just give me a minute, guys. New share and let me go into my console. Yeah. Can I get a quick confirmation in the chat window that you guys are able to see the management console that I've shared across? Yes, we can see. Fine. Thank you. So guys, what I'm going to do is now I'm going to do a live deployment for you where I'm going to be hosting a machine in AWS cloud. And with that machine in the AWS cloud, I'm going to do the code. I'm going to call up my code and do a deployment for it. Yes, sir, we, have... we can log in this uh, AWS cloud. Uh, we are using our account, personal account. We can create. Yeah, of course we can create. Account doesn't have any kind of specifications to personal or uh, office one. So it, should, okay. so it shouldn't be an issue because we, as part of this course, you guys will be creating your own account and you will be doing a deployment into your own account. If you don't mind, can you show us to how to log in that AWS cloud? Because I know the how Azure how to log in, but uh, I don't know AWS. So if you don't mind, can you show me? Uh, thank you very much for your suggestion. But because of the time constraints, the okay. course is the course that we have designed will show you. The, the part of the course has already been enabled how to create an account, how to do a registration. That is a part of the course. So this is just a part of a demonstration where an account is already created and we'll be doing an account deployment. So it is a part of the course. Okay. Okay, sir. If uh, uh, means future, uh, you are giving the whole course training, right? That's what uh, you have to understand the agenda of this session. The agenda of this session is designed for giving a demonstration. Demo. Okay. And we have the complete plan for the course to be discussed later. So if you can allow me, I'll go and do a deployment in front yeah. of you guys. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Thank you. So guys, now it might be the screen might be, you know, it, it might you might be feeling that, you know, I might be doing some kind of, uh, you know, check-ins, check-outs, plugins, deployment. So don't worry about all that stuff. The end aim is I'm just getting things ready in the form of a machine and I'll make that machine available for you so that I can show you a deployment. That is the aim. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to quickly go on to an EC2. EC2 is nothing but your AWS virtual machine service. It's a virtual machine in AWS cloud. And right now I don't have any machines. I'm going to just go ahead and provision a machine quickly. Don't worry guys, if you are not able to get anything right now, because the course is designed to give you in detailed version of what exactly each step by step. But let me give you a little more way of understanding. So click on this option button called launch instance. And I'm just going to use an Ubuntu machine, Ubuntu server for those people who are not acquainted with this kind of uh, IT stuff with regards to Ubuntu. Ubuntu is an operating system similar to your Windows, but it's a Linux version. And I'm going to be launching on a size which is of T2.micro, about one core CPU and one gigabytes of RAM. And I'm going to provision inside a zone. Uh, for example, uh, in my zone, like I have a zone which is like a network. I'm going to provision inside a network and I'll expose it to the outside world so you guys can expose and access it from the outside world and give a public IP address. Guys, why is that I'm showing you all these controls is that these controls are chargeable. When you start deploying them, there is some charge involved. So it's like pay as you go model. Whatever that you use, you will paying, you will be paying for it. So now I'll just move on to the other segment. So like just put a storage, 8 GB of storage. This is a storage where a machine will have 8 gigabytes of storage, where your operating system will be running inside in it like your C drive, then we'll go ahead and attach a machine. So I'll give a main machine is name is skill Sigma AWS cloud machine. Then I'm going to give open ports. Ports are very simple. They'll allow you a traffic. Now the traffic I'm going to be calling on HTTP traffic because I'll call it on a public IP address and then go ahead and review the machine to go ahead and launch. So key pair is the secure way of connecting the machine. So we will be asked to get the key pair and launch a machine. So the machine will get launched. It will take few minutes or about a minute for the machine to be up and running. Now you guys can see in front of your screens, the machine is up and it is getting run. It is running. And the other properties of the machine are mentioned in the bottom section, which you can 
the move, move, you can just ignore for a minute but the part the the point which is very important for us the public ip address so copy the public ip address and i'll just put in the chat window if you guys look into the chat window it doesn't resolve anything it doesn't have anything installed so what i'll do now is i'll connect to this machine and make this machine to display something to deploy my code let's do that so for that first thing i need to do is go and connect to that machine so i'll connect to that machine it asked me share it please connect by using this command let me just copy this command and open up my terminal and let's get started so right now i'll go to my desktop and put this key hit enter i'm making connection to this machine but your screen is stuck i'm sorry yes and that guy sorry let me continue new share how about now people is the screen visible now can i get a quick confirmation yeah now now it's visible yeah thank you but can you go, go back to that last step where you were trying to connect yes i'll do that so it was like okay. guys once again a small request to all of the people out there please put yourself on mute chat i'm requesting once again so yeah thank you so what i did is very very simple i have gone into the screen and what i've done is i have selected this path which is asking me to do an ssh and once i have done the ssh i was able to log into the machine so is the screen visible guys in the terminal can you can you see the terminal screen a black screen in the window a black screen yeah it's visible but where do we need to put this ssh path uh, sir i'll tell you so the path is something which you have if you are having uh, in windows you can open up cmd if not you can have a uh, client which is like putty right now i am running on mac so it is supporting my uh, you know ssh command so i just went to my let me i just open up my terminal here yeah, i open up my terminal and i just pasted that command hit enter and then i am able to log into this machine can i get a quick confirmation guys okay. now you are able to understand the idea of guys again and again i'm requesting you please put yourself on mute if you have any questions i'll definitely answer your questions if you can allow me some time right no problem now let's do one thing now let me take privileges of admin sudo i've taken up next what i'll do is i'll just go ahead and make sure i run a command for updating said yes is going to ready some people i am sure that may are not able to understand the significance of asking again and mute i'm asking you again to be on mute baskar can you take care of the personal please is kind of disturbing us okay now back on to the discussion guys so what i've done is i've just made it and now i'll make sure that i'll install it i'll install a plugin now the plugin that i'll install is apache 2 and say hit enter now guys what i'll do is i'll copy this ip address now i'll put this one in your chat window I'll, i'm going to place in the chat window okay everyone in the meeting i'm putting the chat window can you guys me can you guys give me a quick confirmation that what are you able to resolve with this public ip address can i get a quick confirmation guys please put in the chat window guys can you resolve are you able to resolve to this public ip address able to log in now you should be able to see the screen something like this can i get a quick confirmation from all of you <laughs> are you able to resolve it are you able to get a screen something says welcome to apache ubuntu page welcome to apache ubuntu page yes no ma'am yeah so you are able to see that i made a machine to resolve the traffic yes, now see this 
what i'll do is very simple i'll go to the var folder ww folder and a html folder to add some content so let me just create a simple content saying ion cd slash ion and say vi index.html now i'm just adding a small code welcome to skill sigma training h1 close it guys can you now go and do a verification for the space called ion can you guys check into the chat window with this url can you just type in slash ion after the url if you want i'll put it this one in the chat window to everyone out there can you guys give me a quick confirmation that you are able to see the screen welcome to scale sigma so what this that you have learned from this yes. session now with this session guys i had a machine which was there in somewhere in united states i have logged into that machine deployed a source code and made it up and running why is that now question is are you sure is this machine running on a dell hardware people are you sure is this machine running on a hp hardware are you sure guys are you sure that this machine is running somewhere in east parts of united states or someone is managing that no you are just going there making it things ready because everything is ready in cloud you just go and connect to that machine and make it up and ready hardly took me 2 minutes to do this deployment guys that is what organizations are expecting that are you able to deploy the code okay from where did the index.html kill because you created ion folder and i didn't see any copy paste that's good question i just created a simple vi.index.html file i created a index file i just created a folder and just pasted and i just created a folder ion and created a new hey nice. now i'll make another change in front of you let's say the developer comes and uh, mr baskar comes and says sharath give me uh, you know uh, reference my name i said okay baskar reference is mr baskar i just add up one text a reference by baskar so w quit yes just give me once again a confirmation that now the reference is mentioned by baskar a live change is visible in front of you guys so i was able to make the change and now it is that you can see the live screen which is showing you the reference for the basket as for the request of the basket right now imagine client comes to you and he ask you to go for changes that are like 100 changes a day like not 100 changes like 100 changes that will happen in your source code so you keep on doing it now what i do is i bring up a pipeline where the pipeline idea is i'll bring automation that whatever the changes you make the deployment goes and get it done and that is where the idea of devops will come into picture guys for that we are required to take assistance of cloud and that's where guys the power of cloud is coming into picture the power of devops coming into picture so this training is designed in a way that guys whatever that i've been doing in front of you is going to be detail discussed in detail like what is a machine what is an instance what is a network what is how is that you do a network deployment what is vi what is apache you will learn everything right from scratch though you have exposure making sure that every microscopic detail are been discussed so tomorrow if you are doing a hands on you should be able to do on yourself and that's where guys the project or the course is designed and that's where we are targeting to make sure that everything that we cover is practically designed in a way that you gather the enough skills see that most of you guys have put me a question so let me start sharing the screen okay 
now you can see we have made it made sure that you have enough skills right from the basics where you can understand what is virtualization what is vagrant in terms of virtualization what is networking skill how to write a json and yaml scripting linux basic commands with this you will get started into aws so where you will see right now i was able to launch a linux machine how is that we will be launching a linux machine how is that you go on a set up a machine so this was a linux machine that i have launched in front of you we'll slowly go on to the complex scenarios and if you start to scroll down guys you will see the projects involving the devops in terms of the course content the tools have been mentioned and the good thing is we will do a live project so that you will be in a position to understand the architecture of the project that is designed and do a hands on along with me likewise such so i catered something around six projects out of which out oh, sorry out of which you can see a project number 2 where i will be doing a ci cd pipeline using aws and devops and we'll be doing containerization we'll be doing serverless a lot of projects so guys back onto the discussion where i've started now this the point where i started was development and deployment so if you are a developer or if you are a De devops engineer or you whichever the category you will fall you will now start to be in line with me saying that you are now required to gather how a project source code management works how the checkout works how the build process works how the access works infrastructure provisioning and then as part of a devops engineer if you are not a devops now if you are a build and release engineer now you're an architect you are required to gather complete skill set guys complete skill set so in both the ways it is very much that you have to learn aws you have to learn cloud you have to learn De uh, devops and a good question been asked by one of our student is that it is only applicable for aws i'll tell you one secret guys the secret is devops with aws will work the same tools will work with azure same tools will work with google cloud so when you get started with one cloud provider with aws with devops guys it's easy for you to get adapted to the next cloud providers so on this note so i said let's focus on the deployment so i hope you guys are able to now do a deployment for your application so one question that i am sure you might be having is sharath what is the certification should i go now now people there is a great market that is available for you to train on different courses with different certifications market the secret is market don't recognize any kind of certification so please go ahead santosh okay so guys i'll tell you one simple way of understanding the certification and the market behind this if you guys can understand it that's the story we'll take care santosh uh, the team will take care of it yeah so guys there are three different certification levels that are right now available in the market foundational associate and professional for those people who are planning to get started cloud practitioners guys there is a big keyword is written in front of your screens that is optional that means whether you go for it or you don't go for it doesn't have an impact because it's optional so ignore this exam so what is the next level of exam you have associate and professional professional guys with my experience don't attempt professional exams at this moment because they are very tough for you to clear at this moment with the limited exposure you have so forget about your professional exams so right now you have only associate level exams in associate we have three different exams solution architect developer and sysops admin so that means out of the total 7 to 8 examinations we have now you have the right choice of three exams in front of you and the good thing is guys don't prepare for an exam prepare for the prepare for the learning the course is designed in a way that you have the skills of designing we will carve up the course of solution architect to developer and sys ops admin and based upon your interest level you can go to any of our exam the examinations once again if you look at at a higher side solution architect associate will become a solution <coughs> architect professional sir whereas a developer for devops which go uh, which certification you want to do which need to do okay for a devops you need to first clear your associate level 
examination then you will become eligible for devops that's what i said don't think about the professional exams at this moment okay. you can get started either as a solution architect developer or sysops admin my assurance guys my assurance once again please please don't learn the way that market is expecting you to learn or the industry how the other training service providers make uh, people to work you know they'll train you on solution architect they train you on developer they in sysops admin that is not the way the market is ready to accept you right? because if they have to do that means they will be hiring three people architect developer and sysops admin which is not the case in the market market expects you whichever market expects you that you have okay you go and learn the skill of cloud learn the skill of aws learn the skill of devops if you are comfortable go for an exam so if you are coming from a development background suggestion is developer course coming from an admin admin course solution architect solution architect course so guys this course is designed in a way that tomorrow if you want to sit for any of your exam the course will help you to hmm. confidently attend these examinations you can confidently attend these exams so that's how this course is designed so this course is not specific to one exam this course is designed to cover all these uh, examination patterns and be ready for any exam that you want to sit and it's like courses are the course is designed in a way that which is exam better suitable for you which you will learn over a period of time in this course so that's all guys from my side so in terms of the solutions that i have and just before we go i'm going to show you what is the power now you see the machine is ready and now i'm going to do the termination of the machine see that guys how how the industry has changed i just go and terminate the machine that's all the job is done see launching provisioning deprovisioning in a matter of minutes there used to be a time that things used to take good amount of time they used to that is right. aws home screen right no, yes mr no. nagin yeah yeah okay so ec2 ec2 dashboard we created or uh, that is automatic default that name will be available that is default created that is aws console yeah okay any other question people so i'm i'm ready to start taking your queries so if you have any queries that you want to post please do because of the time constraint i'll try to take maximum questions that are possible i could i'll try my best to answer every question in detail if in case if i'm not able to make sure that your questions are been answered please drop us your questions and queries uh, in the form of emails or uh, anant will start uh, discussing on that so it should be good enough you can put your questions in the chat window i'll take one after the other yeah So, Sharad, so, question uh, here, which says, uh, "How do we practice? Is there an option to practice during training?" Wonderful question. So, guys, during this course, you will be trained to learn how to create an account on AWS. You, once your account gets created, you will do hands-on deployment along with me live into this account, like the way that I've done. You will do a hands-on. You will do a, along with me. The practice will be like we will do a hand. uh parallel you can do parallel along with me the practice or you can do little later after the session but you are required to make sure that you create an account how to create an account is something the part of the course how to set up an account how to do a deployment how to do an automation will be taken care as part of the course that's how the course is designed yeah anant any other questions apart from this general questions will take how to practice i hope i answered your question how does course cover data migration from on premises front very much we will be doing live setups and do migration from aws local data centers on to aws cloud we have those uh, we know discussions in terms of data center migrations uh, is there any option to do practice training yes uh, from the unknown to the everyone question yes it's very simple that you will have an account and do a practice along with me will get any extra certificate also receive i think anand baskar will take care of it could you please share the course content baskar i think uh, people might be needed a copy of this course content i think you might have already shared it but just for the reference we will share this across this course content to the people yeah maybe and there is an option sharat if you could uh, probably attach it in the chat itself i don't know if uh... no problem i'm just looking into this option uh in the chat window guys give me a minute if i can share it across to all of you right at this moment just give me a minute 
start. Okay, I'll do. See the answer for your question. I'll do in front of you only, guys. Let me just make it right itself. So the course is now made has a public IP address. So I'll give you. I'll make it. Guys, let me just do it for you. So let me create a bucket for you in AWS itself. I'm solving the problem. There is a challenge now. I'm doing a solution. So AWS course content for skill sigma. So this is a solution in AWS cloud that I can give you guys. I'm making it public, creating it, create a bucket, and uh, I'll make this bucket uh, public so that I can put the file. So I'll make this one upload at the file. I hope you guys can see the screen. Yeah. Now I'm uploading the screen, the project, uh, the course content is available on this folder. Open it up. Okay, give me a minute. Let me do another small task here. I just kept in Word document. Let me export it as a PDF so that it should be easier for all of us. And add the files. See that, guys? I made a ready made solution for all of you. Give me a problem, I'll find a solution for you. Okay, so just it's done. I'll make it public for all of you so you guys can download it from there. So make it public. And there you go. So let me copy this as a URL, guys, so you guys can take from this window. There you go. Give me a confirmation, guys, that you are able to copy this file. Are you able to download the problem of choosing its problem of identifying which is the better for them? So what normally companies as as far as the practice that I've seen is first thing what they do is they get started with one cloud provider. For example, AWS is a scenario. So after a few months or a few years of working with AWS, they'll come to know that, you know, Google is another option that they have. So why is that they shouldn't go for uh, Google cloud? So at that time, what happens is the people who are already working on AWS platform, like us in the project that we are already part of AWS. So we are given trained or we are trained onto AWS platform from to Google platform so that we can start getting readily adapted. So the nutshell that the summary that what I want to highlight is, Choosing AWS Azure Google Cloud is not in your bucket at this moment. Whichever the cloud with option that is available for you, you can get started. So companies also do the same thing. So whichever is the best option for them, they will go for it. So neither me or not anyone can go for a standard answer. Okay, AWS is best, Google is best, Azure is best. No, it's not like that. It's the way to understand this. Start your career with account provider. Maybe you can start with Google Cloud, then you can shift on to AWS. Or you are on AWS Cloud, you can shift to Google Cloud. It's like you are starting a vehicle to drive, and then you are shifting from a brand of Hyundai to, let's say, the brand of Mercedes. But the skill of driving will remain the same. So my sincere suggestion for all of you is don't go into this situation where you have to identify which is the better cloud. Not only you, not only me, or not only anyone else. The entire market is running behind which is the better cloud. For you, if you want to get started, which is the easiest option for you, then you go and decide for it. I hope uh, you guys got what I'm trying to highlight. Uh, Baskar, does yeah. that? Yeah, sir, and, the one question. Is, is it not on uh, project based? I mean, uh, I have specific requirements and GCP provides more options there. Is it not that kind of uh, stuff to choose one? Between? That's another way. See. We'll tell you, uh, we have some customers where we have a kind of hybrid models, like they run their uh, AWS infrastructure, like their web servers, and they run their database servers in Google Cloud. They run their analytics in Google Cloud. So mixture, it is mixture, even in the project itself, they have options to host different cloud providers. So it's still, it's a, a question that it still needs a solid way of understanding why companies use that way, but it's all depends on project, it all depends on cloud providers. So my suggestion, once again, come back to the same thing is 
if your project requires you to get started with aws go ahead with aws if your project needs demand that no no we are not going to go with aws we'll go for google go for google until unless it is certified by your company but in other cases it's the choice is still left to you thank you